We're back, everyone. It's such a blessing to be with you today. Did you know that over 3 million Americans suffer from celiac disease and 97% don't even know they had it? I'm telling you, you don't hear that much in the news about celiac disease. So this is something we all need to become educated about. Stop and listen today. It might surprise you, someone that you know could be afflicted with this and you could help them. Yes. Richard, this is an amazing do, I, yeah, it's, it, it's just amazes me that people could be so sick and they go from doctor to doctor to doctor and they just don't get the help they need. Yeah, and that's the sad part about this. And uh, gluten sensitivity is one of our poster diseases in that the management of celiac disease is entirely on the shoulders of the patient. It really is. It, it really is because mm -hmm. the doctor can't eat for you folks. You know, it really can't. So it's important that we help get the word out on celiac disease. Now, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. We just don't know. But if we go through this condition and you learn more about it, awareness, you become more aware of it, you may find that you do have it. Now, I look at it this way, folks. Let's say 100,000 people are watching this program. Since 1% have celiac disease, that means there's 1,000 of you watching right now who has this condition, and 970 of you do not realize that's why you have felt bad every day for 10 years. And if we can do something to change that, well, we're just going to do it. Okay. okay? Well, let's, let's start with describing what yeah. celiac is, because again, that's not a disease that anyone hears about much. No, that's, it's, it's not, uh, doesn't get much glamour, does it? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. Celiac disease is a hereditary intolerance of a protein called gluten, okay? And gluten is found in cereal grains. We name this condition celiac disease if it's found in a child, celiac sprue if it's in an adult. It also goes by other names such as non-tropical sprue, adult celiac disease, and gluten sensitivity. I may use any one of these terms today, but you know if I say gluten sensitivity or celiac, you know what I'm talking about now. If one family member has this condition, you know, if someone says, I remember Aunt Joan had that, there's a good chance you may have it too. It runs in families. It is genetic. And get this, folks. Onset may occur at any age from 1 to 80. Yeah, this is an important point. Because if at 60 years of age you, you start feeling bad, you may say, well, I've eaten grain and wheat and bread all my life. It's never bothered me before. It couldn't possibly be celiac disease. Well, yeah, it can. This is one of the oddities and an important point to know about celiac disease. It can hit you at any age. You could have digested and tolerated grain just fine all those decades, and all of a sudden, boom, something happens, and we'll explain what we think happens, and now you can't tolerate it, okay? Okay, so now to describe what it is, we said that it's a sensitivity to gluten. Yes. So let's describe what gluten is. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and in small amounts in oats. Okay? There are several hybrids of, of uh, uh, different species of wheat, including semolina, spelt, kamut, einkorn, tritocal, durum, farro. These are all different variants of wheat, and they all contain gluten. Gliadin is a protein component of gluten, okay? And we, we refer to gliadin because that's one of the blood tests, anti-gliadin antibodies. Oh, so you're saying that yeah. there is a test that you there can get at the test. doctor's office if yes. you suspect that you may have if celiac. If you suspect it, there is a screening test that tests for antibodies to this gliadin. That's right. the test you want to ask for. Now, this gluten is found in a wide variety of things that you wouldn't really think of containing a, a grain, okay? Things such as stamp glue. Every time you <laughs> lick that stamp, you're getting a little gluten in there, and if you're gluten sensitive, that's enough to keep a person with a mouth sore. I'll explain later. Adhesives, lipstick, lipstick can have gluten in it. Lotions, soy sauce, who would think the soy sauce. Soybeans, yeah, but they put gluten in it too. Huh? I don't know. And some medicines use gluten as a, uh, an expander or something to hold the medicine together mm -hmm. in a pill form. Okay, okay. so that's, that's what gluten is. And yes, this is a it's a protein found gluten. in grains. All right. right, so then let's talk a little bit more about celiac disease itself. Yeah, celiac disease is hereditary. If a family member has celiac disease, you have a 1 in 10 chance that you have it too. And remember, it can onset at any age. We suspect there is an interaction between adenovirus 
and chromosome 6 in susceptible people. If it runs in your family, a certain type of adenovirus, which can cause conjunctivitis and intestinal infections. This type of uh, infection interacts with the gene and it triggers gluten sensitivity. And that can happen at any age from 1 to 80. Okay, now you know as much as the doctors do basically on how and why people get it. An immune reaction follows. If you develop this sensitivity, the immune reaction follows. This hand, this fist is gluten. This is the antibody. It makes a complex. It goes into your bloodstream and it travels. That complex triggers immune reactions that make you feel bad and damages organs. Combination of antigen and antibody creates immune reactions. Okay, that's the essence of gluten sensitivity. Symptoms may appear in childhood and then go away only to return in middle age. This is really an unusual, semi-mysterious disease. Okay, comes and goes. The average onset, the, the, let, me, let me rephrase that. The typical celiac patient suffers for 13 years before they attain a diagnosis. 13 years of wondering what's wrong with me, why does my gut hurt every day, why do I have headaches, why am I tired, why am I depressed? 13 years. We need to cut that down. And you do that with awareness, people, hence this program today. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, Richard. Well, then let's talk about the symptoms about celiac. Because I yeah. want everyone out there to know. I want them to know what it's like so that, you know, if this affects them, they can uh -huh. look at the show today and say, hey, that might be me. I'm going to go get that test. Then yeah. I want you to tell everyone the name of that test again later I will. on, I would will. you? I'll, I'll make it real clear for everybody. Good. If an adult has celiac disease, it's, un, it, it's important to understand your symptoms are highly variable. It can be quite mild to very severe. A lot of variation here. Diarrhea, cramping, gas, intestinal gas, nutrient deficiencies from malabsorption. Remember we said antigen antibody complex, gluten in an antibody? It causes damage to the small intestine and that results in the inability to absorb nutrients. So anemia is common in celiac disease. Your intestine can't absorb folate and, and B12 and iron, so anemias are very common. Intestinal ulcers, mouth sores, irritant, you see irritant in the intestinal tract. Vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiencies, osteoporosis, why you're not absorbing your nutrients, okay? Mm -hmm. The gut is inflamed, it can't handle it. Osteoporosis, how about infertility and miscarriages? I hear of couples who can't get the family started. And some of you, it's because of gluten sensitivity. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Lactose intolerance, that one kind of makes sense. The gut's inflamed, you can't digest your foods very well. Abnormal hair loss, alopecia, loss of hair, weight loss, and it may be severe. In severe cases, it can be profound weight loss. Here's one that is very unusual, and I just hate to have somebody find out that they have MS when in fact multiple sclerosis, when in fact it's gluten sensitivity because gluten sensitivity can cause those white lesions on the brain and they look exactly the same on the MRI as MS does. So here someone thinks they have a MS when if they could only avoid gluten, those spots go away in their mental cloud and all clears up. So gluten sensitivity can mimic MS. Dr. Perlmutter writes of that in his book called The Better Brain Book. Very interesting concept. Bottom line on that one, folks, if you've been diagnosed with MS, I would ask for the anti-gliadin test just to be sure mm -hmm. because avoiding gluten could cure your condition. Liver disease, cirrhosis, all of these things, all of these things result as from that antigen antibody complex that circulates. If we avoid gluten, the whole thing goes away. In a child, the most common symptom in a child is failure to thrive. They don't grow. That's why that growth chart. Remember, we mm -hmm. always did growth charts oh, yes. in practice. Mm -hmm. Is the child growing appropriately, gaining weight for his age? If they are not, the first thing we should look for is heart conditions followed by celiac disease. Very common in childhood. Behavior problems are also common in childhood. Folks, so after this break, let's talk about some of the health conditions that commonly coexist with gluten sensitivity. Is it in your history? Find out when we return. <laughs> 